<laughs> Morning YouTubes, it is me and my friend here who's still putting her lipstick on. Morning. Um, we are going to the most amazing dig. Well, it's not a dig. We're not Mel's take or anything like that. We're going to an open day, which is um, at Washingborough, okay? They're building a bypass, so the archies have gone in and... Yep. Network archaeology. Yep. Yeah, and they have uncovered the most amazing amount of um, history. Basically, there is every part of human history there, apart from two periods, okay? One is... Viking. And the other is Paleolithic. Yeah, I don't think they're like... Now we know from the geophysics that this extends underneath the power lines over to the west end of the field. So we're only just starting to reveal this area here. Any questions about this at the moment? Have we got any questions about the Roman stuff going on? Will, will it still be exposed after the bridge goes across? No, unfortunately not. Because the, the, the height of the railway bridge that they're going to put in here and the road formation level going under here, we're going to have to lift all of this. And there's still a chance there's prehistoric remains underneath here that we'll have to look at as well. So all of this will go because the road formation level will be underneath you. Race against time. Then. Race against it. We do have deadlines to meet. That's why we have 60 archaeologists. We're here 10 hours every day in all weathers. Mm. We saw the rain Saturday, yesterday morning. We were out working in that. And, but um, it's, 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 it's great that we do that. And it's great that we then get the chance to share all the stuff from that with you as well. Because once it's gone, that's it. Somebody was mentioned to me about the clay pits as well. We're not playing some of this part, but it's not local, we're not going to play in this immediate area, so we'll think that's a bit of 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 it's an Anglo-Saxon cemetery. We think this is a Christian cemetery and already excavated from here, we've already removed more than 250 skeletons. We know there are more than 300. The red flags we have here are skeletons we still have to excavate. We think this is a Christian cemetery because all of the graves are aligned east-west and all of the, the skulls are facing east, which is traditional for a Christian burial. We've also not found any grave goods at all with any of these. Again, Christian burials tend to be very simplistic. We do believe that most of these were coffin burials because we're finding coffin clasps and coffin nails in a lot of the graves. Only one of these graves so far has had any evidence of the actual coffin. Some of these are more complex where you get different grades into cutting uh, and it takes a bit longer so you cut it all night to come back and continue for the following day. Ideally you would want to lift it in a day, it's not always possible. Okay. Evil Grange I think. Medieval Grange. A medieval Grange. So they stole all the stone from the Roman side and brought it over here. Oh. Maybe you just say that they stole the stuff from the Roman site, brought it here. 
And of course the Roman site is uh, just over there a little bit, where we've just been. Yeah, this is a medieval malting complex, and this would have been six foot below the surface. We had the main area here, we had a malting they would then want to stop the germination process so they keep the sugar and the starch for making bread and beer. So they had... We're a couple of months more in this area. I think the road's due to open October 2019 is the date that we're All these little red things, flags, are where they found flint. So this is a lot of prehistoric man. There's a lot of wind, by the way. Carry on watching if you like. Okay, I'll just let everyone get here. Is that a boat then? That's a boat, yeah. Okay, I'll um, tell you all about our log boat in a minute. We'll just let everyone arrive. Um, make a solution, I think it's glycol, uh, they call it now. Um, mix, mix it with it, impregnate the wood, and it will halt that process, which should preserve it for, for people to see in the exhibition. <laughs> um, the other thing about the data being in the Bronze Age, it fits in nicely with the active Paleo Channel and the barrows that we have behind us and over there five, six thousand years ago. Uh, the people are burying the dead in uh, long mounds, long barrows, long cairns. Um, in the event of the early Bronze Age, the beaker people suddenly appear, beaker folk, beaker culture, and they start building round barrows. This is such a barrow. So, we, uh, the construction would be a mound uh, with a ditch and possibly a bank. These here are searching for flints and these are roughly 2500 BC. So, because if this was a hunting ground, you're not going to get a roundhouse here or things like that. So it's probably just... Um pop down for the weekend, do a bit, <laughs> bit of hunting, knock a few out of heads up. I mean, I did things for animals, wildfowl, game, deer, it's incredible. Not on this spot because it's, it's, it's big about the floodplain. Okay? Yeah. So that's a big nodule of flint I picked up from the coastline of West Sussex. Being all rounded and stuff, it's pretty hard to actually get started. In it. If you can manage to take a blow, gather round, yeah, get some nice flat planes going, and then you've got angles there that you can work off and start shaping this thing, yeah, get it into blades and things like that. So. That process would start with a hammer stone. It's this one. I smashed earlier on. Uh -huh. No, I did it and broke it. But yeah, you start off with that and you just start belting it, taking chunks off to get some sort of smoothness and regularity to it. Then, you know, as you get going, the stones can get smaller and smaller. I mean, this at the moment has got the potential for a number of things. I could take another massive flake off by hitting it there, which would remove. <laughs> And a flat side on that side and a flat side on the other side. Another massive flake that could be used to make an axe. Any kind of chopping tool anyway. But most of the time we're dealing with a lot smaller tools. That is a core tool, so that's come from something like that. Doesn't look like much, but it's a pick. Just for digging in the ground. You could use it both ways actually. Very basic tool, very old. Nothing to do with this side. And so, move on to that. Excuse me, all these little bits on the floor, would they be very useful and valuable? Yeah, that's a demonstrator. Yeah. <laughs> so, once you've broken this down a bit more, most of what we're after is blades and flakes. So that's a flake, simple thing. And uh, just chip away around the edges and make yourself an arrowhead from that. 
without too much difficulty. It's uh, an example of one I made over there. It's, it's nothing special, but it did the job. Um, so then we get down to like cores and things like this now. So as you can see, I've created some sort of flat platform this room, and that's the basis of a lot of the tools that we're looking at on this site, such as microliths. Even that arrowhead like that could be made from a blade, but probably more likely to be made from a flake. So I'll attempt to give you a demonstration of how to remove one of these blades. So if we take the base of the start of one there, but it didn't run very long. But from that, you know, we can start to create scraping tools, that would be a case of just basically nibbling the edge down from one of these things, Get, getting a bit blunter, keeping it straight. It's not really the way I do it. It's it quite hard. Yeah, and then you've got something you can scrape a hide with. It's not going to snap or break. And it's almost glass though. No. It is. It's essentially glass. Yeah. See the yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, but we, we've got, you literally, you can dig these up from 5,000 years ago and they're still sharp when they come out of the ground. It's mm. astonishing, astonishing. <coughs> it's quite variable as well, isn't it? I mean, that's... Okay, we're done. Uh, that was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Um, just wicked. So we thought we'd end the video here at Abbey. Look at that. This is Tup Home Abbey near um, Bardney and uh, there's loads of sheep in the field and guess who keeps stopping to eat fresh sheep poo? This one, look. That one. But... Look, it's Commander McCrory! <laughs> oh, I don't think Kipper likes sheep so we're going to have to keep him away. So... <sighs> Madness. That one's calling its mummy. Yeah. Uh, anyway, right, um, give us a thumbs up please, uh, if you're new to my channel please subscribe and um, leave a comment, I'll try and get around to the comments as often as I can. Okay, bye! What is having a feed look? What is? They're sheep, they're lamb. Oh, there's a sheep over there getting some milk. Aww. Aww, and they're nice. <laughs> right, say goodbye. Bye! See you later. Feels like I'm really low. What? We're doing a video, aren't we? Are we? Yeah, I'm oh, videoing it. Okay. <laughs> Give me a chance to put my lippy on. <laughs> <sighs> Morning, YouTubers. It's me and my friend. Do you still <laughs> <laughs> put me lippy on? It's what you do on a Sunday morning when you're off on a whatever you're doing. Is that all right with you, Paul? Yeah. Ha, ha, ha.